Question. Is ChatGPT smart enough to go through a search term report, identify top performing, high performing search terms, convert them into keywords, follow a campaign mapping showing source campaign, destination campaign, and create a bulk file for you to upload to Amazon? Answer, yes it is. And we're gonna show you the prompt that we use. We've been working on this for a couple of weeks trying to dial it in. I think we finally have it down, so we're gonna make this available to you. In the description of this video, we'll have a link to the prompt we use, as well as to the Excel sheet that we're going to use as a template to have ChatGPT work through and, and prep everything for us. So before we begin, just a quick kind of clarification. What's important for you guys to know is you do need to be using ChatGPT+. Plus. It's $20 a month. I find it's extremely worth it. I use it all the time. Um, but once you're signed up with ChatGPT+, Plus, you're just going to come into the settings and beta, beta features, and turn on the code interpreter which essentially allows you to upload Excel files. ChatGPT can read them, interpret them, and even uh, create a, an Excel file for you to download and use. So you're gonna turn that on. You're gonna go to ChatGPT4. You're going to say code interpreter beta. This is the system we're going to be using. And then we are going to upload an Excel sheet, copy paste in the prompt, and then everything else is good to go. So let's uh, quickly just show you what the spreadsheet is gonna look like. We have here, this is kind of just a blank template. It's going to be writing, filling in everything down here. I know this isn't all of the normal columns that you typically see on a new bulk sheet, but that's because we're only dealing with keywords and product targets. So these are the only columns that we need. Amazon's not gonna throw any errors if we're missing uh, the other columns like budget, campaign budget, and all that kind of stuff. Things will be good to go. You're then going to have your search term report. So you're just gonna copy paste your search term report right into here and uh, it'll be good to go. And then last thing is you're going to need a campaign mapping. So you will need to have your uh, source campaigns as well as your source ad groups, your destination campaigns and your destination ad groups along with the uh, destination ad group IDs. So you can pull these IDs, just download a bulk sheet. You'll see all the campaigns uh, with their campaign IDs along with the ad groups and their ad group IDs. So you just wanna download all of that uh, I guess you technically don't need the source campaign and source ad group IDs. I don't know. We include it regardless, but uh, you mainly just need the source campaign, source ad group names, and then the destination campaign, destination ad group names and IDs. And so that'll be the third sheet here. And yeah, everything else, uh, the prompt is going to be able to cover. So let's take a look at what that prompt actually is. So the first thing is we're just going to give, this first paragraph is kind of just giving some context so that the machine knows what it's supposed to be expecting, what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, we're just kind of walking it through the, the sheet contents. And then we are going to tell it to identify the high performing customer search terms, which we can provide our own destination, our own definition for what that is. So I like this definition where basically it has at least two orders and the A cost is below a certain percentage. So you can certainly tweak this. The things that are in, you can tweak everything, but the, the highlighted ones are, are ones that are maybe items that you want to, you know, simple, simple tweaks and everything else, you know, maybe just leave it intact uh, unless you see any major changes. But, you know, some people might want to say just if it has at least one order and ACOS is under, maybe you want to change that to 35% or whatever. Uh, I do have a clarifier in here because the uh, search term spreadsheet has a space bar at the end of the header of ACOS and that was causing some issues. So I just let it know that there's a little trailing space and that the column itself is in a percentage format already. So otherwise, uh, you can just ignore that. That's just to avoid any errors in the processing. And then we have ChatGPT look for product targets. So anything that's beginning with a B0 is going to be a, an ASIN target. Everything else is going to be a keyword. So it'll follow the criteria. Anything with two orders, low A costs, it's going to pull those over to that main sponsored products campaign sheet. Uh, for the, uh, I'm using phrase match for this. You can add phrase and exact or just exact or broad, whatever. Um, for this account, I just want the phrase match keywords in there. So that's all we have. And then it's just going to write those over for the product targets. Obviously there's uh, a special syntax. It needs to be ASIN equals, and then the ASIN there in quotes. So it'll follow that syntax. And then we also like to, you know, we need a starting bid for all of these new targets that we're adding. So we just like to take the cost per click because if it, you know, converted twice, ACOS was good. The cost per click is probably also good. So that'll just be our starting bid. But of course you can also, you can throw in a multiplier here. You can say, um, you know, take the cost per click, multiply it by 1.5 or something like that. If you want to increase those bids just a tiny bit. So totally up to you. Again, this whole thing's customizable. 
the uh, last few steps are just getting the system to read through the, uh, the campaign mapping sheet. So it's going to find what the source campaigns are and line those up with the destination campaign IDs and write all those over, fill in the extra remaining columns, just say, you know, create, enabled on the state. And then uh, the very last step is just checking for duplicates so we don't get any errors. So it'll check there, delete any duplicates, and then create an Excel file for us to download. Uh, and then I do have it, because ChatGPT, it's not, it's not just a, uh, a code. It's not like a fixed code algorithm thing that's running. It's a neural network, which means it has like a million different connections and logic points that it's, it's kind of like dropping a coin down like at Chuck E. Cheese's, then it like trickles down the tree thing, you know, and like you drop it in the center and it could land on one spot or another spot. So it's always going to land a little bit differently depending on how it kind of makes that, that neural network. And so this prompt works like 90% of the time, but sometimes it does get confused, have some issues. And so I just throw in that, that final step there just um, in case if it has any you know, if it gets confused on anything, it could ask away. So all we're going to do now is we'll just take that uh, sheet that I was showing you before. That's our template. Uh, we will paste in the prompt and ship it. So it'll take a minute to think. I'm going to pause this video and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so it finished working. It looks like it followed all the steps uh, properly. So Basically, just it's going to repeat all the steps back to us. It first goes through, identifies the high-performing search terms according to our definitions, classifies, you know, breaks out product targets versus keywords, uh, goes on and continues writing them to the proper sheet. It extracts the cost per click, sets that as the bid. Uh, next thing, it looks through the campaign mapping, finds the destination campaigns IDs, writes all of that, and then uh, the final sheet, the final kind of few steps are just writing create in the operation column, filling on all that, all that stuff, and removing removing uh, duplicates. The, I think this was interesting. Again, the um, it's different every single time, this chat GPT thing. And so what it's doing is it's taking your logic, it's writing its own program really quickly, runs it, and then, uh, and yeah, the, every time it writes the program, it might be a little bit different. So in this case, it actually ran into an error while it was working, but I think it's a very impressive tool, it was able to troubleshoot its own error. What it essentially did was it created a duplicate campaign name and ad group name. And so it uh, it identified its own error, removed those duplicates, and then uh, created the file for me to download. So it's always going to be a little bit different if you, you know, once you run this, maybe you get it back and it works perfectly. Maybe you need to like, let it know like, hey, you accidentally made this duplicate thing and it'll run it again. So yeah, give it a few tries. It's always good to give it some feedback. So um, I downloaded this uh, just to QA it. You should always QA it. Uh, over here, we can actually see what it what it did. Uh, the campaign and ad group IDs they get stored as this weird uh, number, so I usually just like convert it back to a normal number. It might be fine to not have to do that, but I don't know. I like putting it back to a number there. But yeah, all of the keyword text. I mean, this is all going to be blurred, so you're not going to be able to see any of this. But all of the keyword text is appropriately set as keywords. All of the product targets are appropriately set and formatted. Now, uh, in this in this sheet, there are a few blanks, um, and the blanks are there because our uh, we had some legacy campaigns that don't have the right structure for us. We actually don't want to harvest from those legacy campaigns, and so there was no destination for them. And so that's why there's a few blanks. There was because there was no uh, there there was no destination campaign for for those. So uh, I could have just removed those legacy campaigns from the search term report to avoid that. Or you can just, when you get here, just delete the ones that were, that were, uh, delete the rows that were blanks. So otherwise, everything here looks good to go. Uh, I'm going to try to upload this and, you know, we'll see what happens if it goes through. So it looks like the file went through okay. A uh, hundred of those keywords were harvested. There were 32 errors. I just downloaded that sheet just to take a quick look at it. And it looks like most of those errors were uh, the keyword already existed or the product target already existed, which is fine. We don't need to add it again. So otherwise, yeah, the, the final step is I always like to, after doing a bulk upload, just check the history tab in the ad console, just to make sure everything went through as expected. And otherwise, I mean, that's it, you know? So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think about this, how you think you might tweak the prompt that we created or other things that you think ChatGPT can do. But I really want to start a conversation around this. I'm sure there's a lot more untapped strategies that just, you know, the, the limits here are really just our own creativity. So 
let's go see what else we can do and please subscribe for future content like this we're planning on doing a few more videos just like this so make sure you're subscribing liking it helps us out keeps us happy keeps youtube happy so yeah let us know what you think and we'll talk to you guys next time